There is a new Husker on board. We will tell you about him. And when we say new, we mean just in the last hour or so. So welcome in for the next hour here at Huskers Live right here at the Voice of College Football. It's our 74th edition. And the guy that makes it all happen, of course, Greg Peterson. Bring those comments and questions. Leave them in the live chat and we will get to them and bring your friends on board as well. So it's not too late to say, hey, we're talking Nebraska football right now. Hit up those friends on uh, social media. Let them know we're here. Greg, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Trying to survive the uh, heat wave we have going on here in middle America. But uh, yeah, other than that, we're all good. How about you? A roller coaster on the East Coast. We, we, we completely missed that heat wave. We didn't, we didn't get a heat wave at all. We, we had really nice weather, but like typical summer, low 80s, like perfect, real nice. But then like every other day, a couple of times, it's been like all of a sudden today, it feels like it's October. Wow. Yes, it's wow. not good. <laughs> Don't like it. No. Yeah, that is, that's odd timing, but I'd take that right about now. I'll okay. I yeah, can't even I, I I get can't. it. I, I can only take the dogs out for a walk in early morning or after the sun goes down. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know what we're looking at right now, but it does not. Like, I, I haven't gone outside today, so I don't know exactly what we're looking at. But uh, it feels, you know, I can tell inside that it's not. It's 66 right now. There you go. 66. So that's what it is. Okay. That's the temperature my wife keeps our house at. <laughs> Well, I'm okay with that. Uh, depending <laughs> on... I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A little too cool? A little too yeah, warm? It's a little too, too cool. cool. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Six step. I keep creeping that up. Uh, the older I get, the the higher that gets. I'm up to about 68 now, and okay. that could even be a little higher. Yeah. yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Uh, Hayden Moore. He is the newest uh, Husker. He's a linebacker. And uh, he's <laughs> at 6'3", 210, out of Colorado. A top 10 player in the state of Colorado. And I saw his offer list and a couple of the other schools that were the most recent in the running for him included Iowa and Michigan. So that says a lot. Uh he had offers from Colorado and Iowa State and Iowa and UCLA, among among others. Um, yeah. So, you know, another get for, uh, you know, Coach Shenander on the defensive side of the ball. Or ninth, the ninth commit in the 2023 class, and he was here watching uh, Friday Night Lights on Friday night here. And, um, you know, he had a great, great visit, and obviously – it must have went pretty well since he pulled the trigger. But, yeah, he's at Aurora, Colorado, uh, Regis Jesuit High School. and <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I think he fits right in with uh, with what Nebraska's defense is all about. Uh, you know, reminds me a lot like, uh, you know, guys like Nick Hendricks. Um, they're, they're on the roster right now. And uh, – you know he's he, he's gonna either play Mike or Sam. That's what they're they're looking at him at. You know, um, you know, an off the ball type of linebacker. So, yeah, I mean he's an athletic dude and uh, he's got some length and um, you know they add a middle linebacker into this class, so it, it's all good, <clears throat> all good for Nebraska. And you know it's nice to have. They always like to you know have that chance there, or they've always got a, a, a pretty good chance there in that uh you know that radius here of colorado and missouri and and kansas and iowa to to be able to pluck guys from and and that's another one and i i'm not gonna say anything for sure but i'm suspecting that i will be assigned to go see him play <laughs> at one point of the season here this this upcoming uh high school season so let's see, you're going to have to head on out to uh, Aurora, Colorado, which is close to uh, Denver, correct? Yeah, it's a suburb of Denver. Yep. Yeah. I played there uh, in midget football. We uh, we were champions of our uh, of our league, and uh, they, we always uh, 
the association was that uh, you'd go to Denver and play their their opposing winners, and then you'd stay with uh, you'd stay at the house of uh, the opposing team's player <laughs> and uh, hang out with them for the whole weekend. It was pretty cool. So uh, yeah, they uh, they spanked us pretty good. I'll I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, you got there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, you know, a seven-hour bus ride from Lincoln to, to Aurora, Colorado. Uh, I suspect I would fly. Well, maybe not. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, you got Brock Knutson as a commit as well, who's from Scotts Bluff, which is uh, only about, uh, you know, a couple uh, hour and a half, two hours from Denver. So uh, I, I suspect that, uh, yeah, that, re that, that weekend just got a lot harder for me. I'm going to have to find out if they can play or if they're playing on a uh, – somebody's on a Thursday night and somebody's on a Friday night on the same weekend and uh, probably make that trip work out pretty good. Which would, be, which, would be, which would mean flying into Denver and then driving to Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, and then back to Denver <laughs> and then fly home. Yeah. Hayden Fry, folks, or Hayden Moore, Hayden, Hayden Moore. Fry. Hayden hey. Fry, uh, I, that would be something else, yeah, if he was back uh, eligible. Hayden Moore, <laughs> 111 total tackles, 59 total tackles uh, this past varsity season. 11 tackles for loss, five sacks. So making a lot of plays. So he's tackled a few people in his life. So he knows how to do that. They play a pretty good high level of, uh, of high school football out there in, in the Denver area too. You know, so it's a good pickup. Definitely. Whenever you can get a top 10 player from, from a state, uh, you're doing pretty well. Absolutely. Appreciate everybody being here. And again, uh, tell your friends, Family and friends, anybody who loves Nebraska football, and we've got, uh, let's see, we've got USC, Michigan, Ohio State, and uh, some other fan bases repped as well. So don't have to be a Nebraska fan to join us to talk college football. Well, you've been through a lot of these weekends of uh, camps and official visits. So how did this one compare last weekend? Oh, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, it, it, it was warm <laughs> to put it to put it lightly, um, but you know, it, I I thought like you know Friday Night Lights took took part on on Friday, obviously, and um, we hosted a lot of official visitors again, and and, and several commits. Um, what? Pop Watson, William Pop Watson, the quarterback commit, was there enjoying his official visit. And, and Dwight Boodle, uh, the corner commit from, from Florida, the brother of DiCaprio Boodle. Um, you know, and then you had Sam Sledge was, was there as well. And, you know, they were just kind of uh, hanging out, doing their thing. And, um, you know, the camp went off really well. I thought, I thought for the most part, it, it – it, it, it was a pretty decent camp. Um, kind of these days now, the way recruiting is going is that this is more of an event to bring in official visitors for to kind of see what Nebraska is all about. And those guys are, are kind of coveted to where that they don't need to work out during the camps. So these camps are mostly for, you know, finding younger guys, um, you know, there, there was a lot of guys that came down uh, that showed up last minute from Louisiana, and I, I suspect that has a little bit of something to do with the Mickey Joseph uh, connection there, too. Uh, and they performed well. And um, I, I think the headliner of the camp that did work out, who, who does have a Nebraska offer, is, you know, one of the top players in the state right now. Um, you know, so – that, that it all went off pretty good. Um, it, it was just it was really fun to see everybody, all the coaches interacting with the kids, and, and all the the players doing all the coaches, all the coaching, you know, helping out the coaches and with their presence down there too. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it worked out really well. And then 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 on uh, on Saturday morning, following that, uh, the Adidas Pipeline camp took place as well and um 
you know, that was also, it was very interesting. And, and, and it, it actually shocked me that I came to, I entered the stadium and nothing was going on there. And the uh, security people are like, oh yeah, they're over in Hawk Center and won't be out here until one o'clock. And uh, so everything was going on in the practice fields and, and inside the uh, inside practice facility, Hawks field. And um, it was really cool because we actually weren't limited to being in the stands. Uh, and uh, so we were right up in there close and personal. I got really good video and um, saw a lot. Of, I, it, it was the highlight to me was seeing uh, Donovan Rayola, coaching these kids and uh just the presence he has out there doing his thing and you can tell that he comes from an nfl system and um you know he's whipping these kids into shape at a camp and you know he's telling he's like you know get your hands out there and be ready to fight um you know so I take away from this is that, you know, there's going to be no more dancing around garbage with the offensive line here anymore. It's going to be, we're going to fire out and, 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 you know, we're going to attack you. We're not going to dance around and wait for you to try to attack us. Um, so yeah, I, I'm super, super impressed with seeing Donovan rail coaching up close and personal. And, um, I mean, it's kind of funny, too, that there's also during this camp and, you know, like I mentioned, it's the same kind of thing. It's like there's a lot of young guys there. and um, it, it was interesting to see there was a couple of uh, offensive line uh, 2024 prospects taking their visit, um, walking around, and, you know, being shown around by some of the coaches. And, um, you know, they were watching the offensive line uh, drills going on and stuff during the camp and, 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 and big old Teddy Prohaska is out there helping and, and, and right up in there being the number one, like being the assistant coach to, to, to Donovan Rayola. And, uh, you know, say, hey, oh, yeah, here, let's meet Teddy. And so, you know, Teddy, obviously Teddy's a big old boy at 6'9". And, and uh, you know, this cat that, that he's meeting is probably about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you know, he's a big boy too, but uh, he looks up at Teddy and, and, you know, they shake hands and stuff. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, Teddy's like, where are you from? And, um, you know, they're from Texas. And, and he's like, oh, yeah, uh, Omaha, Nebraska. You know, he's all proud of that and stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was just a really cool experience to see and to be up close and seeing those guys. Uh, Mike Dawson, the, the defensive line coach. Uh, has a chalkboard out there. He has a grease board out there on wheels uh, on the field during a camp and, and showing guys what they're doing. So there was a lot of really good takeaways that we got out of this. So when you bring up Rayola and watching him coach, uh, that's a good point uh, there because for a lot of you media that go to practice, of course, your practice time is typically depending on what, what program you're covering. Your practice time Very is limited to a lot of stretching yeah. and a lot of warm up and that sort of thing. And this gets you the opportunity to see how that coach coaches. Exactly. What technique is. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's very, very refreshing to see all that. And I mean, that's the same thing as going on with Friday night lights. Cause you can see Mickey Joseph doing the same thing. And, and, uh, you know, any of the other veteran coaches in the staff, I've already seen do that plenty, plenty of times, uh, you know, cause I, I've traveled with a lot of those guys across the country and other, and other satellite camps and stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's nice to see the new guys in action and, and kind of gauge um, what kind of differences you might see in the upcoming season with, with a new coaching staff. So, A lot of people are asking about the, uh, Coleman and Noonan, of course, and what the feel is about uh, where they're leaning. And, uh, you know, Sam mentions here that they interviewed today. Yeah. They, they interviewed <laughs> Yelly Belly as well. When is uh, Malachi Coleman going to commit? I, I, I'm not sure if uh, if I missed something, if they put out a date or anything like that. But to my knowledge right now, nobody's um, 
announced any any date when they're going to commit at this point. But um, you know, I, I gotta love the chances for both getting Maverick Noonan and Malachi Coleman uh, at Nebraska. It's it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for another program to steal away both of those guys. Um, I, I've gotten to know both of them pretty well over the last couple of years, and um, yeah. I've mentioned before too, when you see Danny Noon and Maverick's dad, he looks like he can still suit up and, and and play in the NFL right now again too. So he's a scary looking dude. <laughs> and and uh, no, I mean, I think Mavericks Mavericks one of those kind of a, a, a different type of a a, a, a com, or a prospect that um, you know. He keeps things kind of close to the vest, and uh, it, and obviously he's smart to do that, you know, because you know he has a high profile dad that's a legend at at, at Nebraska, <laughs> and they live you know forty minutes away from Lincoln, and um, and he is a very very talented football player in his own right. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Mavericks one of the He's one of the funnest prospects that I've really, in my 20 plus year career of doing this, he's one of the, the funner ones to, to watch play. I mean, <laughs> he, he makes things happen. And I'll say the same thing about Malachi Coleman. Holy cow. And, and this is a guy that can't totally come off the radar two years ago, going to my former high school and, and is one of the most athletic freaky looking guys that, that you'll lay your eyes on. Um, uh, you know, it, it, he could play any sport that he wanted to, I, I tell you right now. Um, so, yeah, both of those guys and uh, yeah, the way that the, 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 the Coleman family is and Malachi is with the media and stuff like that, it, I, I, I would have a hard time seeing him leave Lincoln and the state of Nebraska, in my opinion. Somebody here is going deep, deep, deep into the recruiting process all the way to 2025. And I know that those guys are showing up for camps, of course, but. Uh, Absolutely. We saw some this weekend that were pretty impressive. Did you see quarterback Mikey Gow? He's out of Bellevue East in Nebraska. We did see him. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. He, he's an up and comer. Um, he's on rate. He's on at everybody's radar. Really. Um, you know, we'll see. We want to see him play in an actual game. Um, you know, because some, some kids can be camp warriors and look great, but then, uh, when you put the pads on and everything, it doesn't translate. So, you know, he's, he's a guy that we're going to be watching. Definitely. Omari and Miller's being asked in the chat, as he always is be uh, asked about, uh, he would be a tremendous get of course at six two one ninety 190 as a top 15 wide receiver in the country and the top 100 player out of Louisiana to go to Nebraska. But that's, that's the big lean for most of the recruiting analysts. You know, as like we've said here several times lately, the power of Mickey Joseph, uh, <laughs> it, it reaches wide in the state of Louisiana. And, uh, you know, you're talking about a guy that's homegrown and played his college football at Nebraska and then – obviously coached at LSU and his track record of uh, producing talent is unmatched in my opinion. Um, just look at all the guys he's sent to the NFL. So yeah, uh, I think right now Nebraska is always going to be considered to be, you know, one of the top uh, five probably choices of a, of a wide receiver coming out of the state of Louisiana right now, um, at least for the next couple, two or three years. Randy is going to comment here, whether Danny Noonan is the originator of the fumble ruski. I thought that was Dean Steincooler. 
Yeah, Danny Noonan was <laughs> – he played on the other side of the ball. Yes, right? played on the other side of the ball. Yeah. Dean tackle. Yeah, so uh, – Dean no. Steincooler. Dean Steincooler was – yes, uh, was the one who uh, carried that in for, a th- for the touchdown. So, yeah. <laughs> That's funny too. I, you know, I think I've only seen that once or twice ever since that, <laughs> that first time. <laughs> Folks, appreciate you being here. A uh, good crowd on hand. Let's make it stronger. Just, uh, of course, you know, college football fans that we don't know. A lot of people out there that don't know we're doing this every Tuesday night at 6 Central, 7 Eastern. So get them on in here. We appreciate you doing that for us. And uh, before you get settled, hit the like button. All right. It is time for me to dive into. Oh, you, don't want to, you mean you don't want to talk any College World Series that's going on 40 miles that's down the road? Football show. I know. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, what do have you ever caught a game? Nebraska had a bad year. Never mind. <laughs> have you gone to a game? No, I was okay. actually, well, uh, I thought I was going to get to go to the Notre Dame game against Texas, but I guess that fell through. So, nope. I picked up an Athlons this week. So, um, I, I let a lot of people know this during various shows that uh, the, the state of college football in Connecticut is such that uh, I went to Walgreens, I went to CVS, I went to Walmart, I went to Target. I went to everywhere you could possibly go, grocery stores, to try to find uh, any of the college football preseason magazines. Couldn't find anything. Barnes & Noble, like <laughs> six racks of magazines that are 10 feet long. There must be 500, 800 magazines. No <laughs> college football magazines. Um, but I finally found one. Finally found one. So I got a I got to uh, thank my. Can't you subscribe to that and they get it, they mail it to you? Yeah, you can. You can. You, 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 get a mailing. you can get a mailing. But I got spoiled the last few years because somebody already, um, whether it was Phil Steele sent me one or somebody sent me one. So I was set the last few years. So I finally yeah. ventured out because uh, I thought oh, none are showing up. So uh, I ventured out and yeah, I was, I, I finally tracked one down. So. We're going to do, uh, nobody's got any comments and questions there in the live chat. We're going to hit up some no. some numbers here. Well, let's do this. They've got a um, scouting the Huskers section here in Athlons where they basically talk <laughs> to a Big Ten coach anonymously. And um, so we'll get your take on this, Greg. This coach says, uh, in their division, Nebraska still has the best-looking roster. We call it the all-bus team, but because they look better than anyone else in the West in pregame. Long, tall dudes, really athletic, and then after a quarter or so, you stop worrying because they're usually hurting themselves. <laughs> they struggle with turnovers. They struggle with technique. I think it's a culture issue. So there's one comment. I agree with that 100%. Okay. <laughs> Next thing they say, defensively, they've improved, but they lost some of their better guys to eligibility and they filled it with transfers. We ask ourselves a lot what's going on there because they're pulling in good talent and have the resources and the administration seems to have faith in this staff. Then he says, uh, with the new offensive coordinator and the do or die mentality, they have to manage the summer really well and find the right quarterback. We think we know who that is. Uh, my guess is that Mark Whipple is going to take over the room. He's a headstrong guy. All right. Then we've got to, the biggest thing they need to do is get the offensive line to a point where they can run the ball long enough to get, let the defense breathe. That defense is not the problem. They were solid as hell at times. The offense just needed to stay on the field and not burn quick possessions, not go tempo and get desperate because they're playing from behind. Obviously, this is a big year for them. They're talented enough, but is there some kind of mental block there? If they can't come out and win and show some signs that they can build around what they're doing, this is probably it. Bang! Nails it. (laughs) I don't know what else I can add to that. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah. 
there's not a single thing in there that I would disagree with. Um, and I think it's obvious, too. I mean, if you've been watching this program, basically flounder for the last four years at the same type of a level. And you do. I mean, you know, I, I hate it that every, you know, for the last, I, I can't even tell you how many years that I can't go outside my house without my neighbors. Well, hey, Greg, uh, how are they going to do this year? You know, <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of have a standard answer. I'm like, I, I like it. I, they look good to me, man. You know, I hope they're, I hope they're better. And, you know, so you always get grilled about this. And um, I think, I, I mean, obviously, I think that they've poised themselves to the position here where they are in a, they're in a do or die spot here for, for coach Frost, obviously. Um, and, you know, with the way the schedule is lined up and those statements are so true about how awesome they look coming off the bus. I mean, you know, you put a bunch of them on your all lobby team. Um, you know, if you're writing a column, it's just like, holy cow, look at these guys. And and he's right. I mean, after the game starts and they start hurting themselves, they they keep going backwards instead of forwards. Yeah. And the offense has done – I mean, they've not done the defense any kind of favors whatsoever. Um, and that's why – the. I'm so excited about having Donovan Rayola here now as, a, as an offensive line coach because I think that changes things here. If you're going to start running the ball down downhill instead of just all this fancy schmancy um, dink and dunk stuff and um, try to catch you off guard here, no, no, We're, we got to get back to that. So many Husker fans have been just dying to see is that. You know, for 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 so many years, they dominated the line of scrimmage, and and just and implied their will on any team they were facing. Um, that's that's what won them games. That's what won them national championships. And you know what? You got to get back to some sort of that kind of offense right now in this league. Um, Otherwise, if you can't run the ball and, and and control the football, instead of trying to all this quick strike stuff, uh, you know, big play. Hey, yeah, great, we're an explosive offense and we hit the big play. But if you only hit two of those big plays a game, what's it getting you? And that's kind of what we've been at here for the last several years. So, and Mark Whipple, I think, obviously, yeah, he is a he's a. You know he's a he's probably your like your ultimate general. Um, you know he is running the show. Don't don't even make any mistakes about it. Um, and that's why he was brought in. And you know he's the guy here to fix things here on the twilights of his career. Um, you know if you listen to Scott Frost talk about Mark Whipple. It, it, the utmost respect comes out of every word that he says when he's talking about him. So, um, and, and he's, he's, he's revered in, in this business and, you know, so I, that's what, that's why I'm optimistic right now about moving forward and actually having that, that type of a year that uh, gets fans excited again. And, uh, you know, and, and it is moving forward because I think they have, I mean, it is, it's a question mark. They've added a lot of, of new talent to replace a lot of guys they lost. And, you know, they lost a lot of guys to the draft. You know, they haven't had that problem lately, losing uh, some guys to the draft like that. I mean, you know, the graduating guys, yes, but, um, but then the transfer portal as well. But I think they did. They couldn't have done any better replacing any of the, the roster positions they lost from last year, in, in my opinion. And um, they've obviously they've upgraded in, in in you know in veteran knowledge of the game and games played at a high level. So 
heck, uh, yeah, it's it's a question mark right now. But you know, am I optimistic? Yes. So, you know, we'll see. And, and that guy's, you know, the guy from Athlon lives in Nashville. He's probably never been to a game here before in his life. So, there you go. Well, that was a Big Ten coach that said. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they no. Were quoting no, an anonymous no, right. Big Ten coach. I'm just talking about the guy that wrote the story. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, you mentioned these oh, uh, NFL draft right. losses. Who do you think they're going to miss the most? Oh boy, I mean, oh. Jojo Doman. He's the first guy that comes to mind for me. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. I mean, as as the emotional leader, the captain type guy, him. But Cam Taylor Britt brought so much to the defense as a lockdown corner and a big time football player. Um, those two guys really, really come to mind. But then Cam Jurgens as well is a guy that that really came into his own as a center and, and um, you know a guy that I covered all through high school as a tight end and, and, and a fullback type, you know, H back type guy that was like the best athlete on the field. And uh, Scott Frost says, "Hey man, your 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 future's at center, and look at him now." Um, I, I wouldn't put past him starting in the NFL right now. So, I, yeah, I mean, that's a question mark right now. Those other positions are replaceable, but the center position right now is, you know, there's a couple of seasoned guys in there, but they haven't had any experience really playing center. Um, so they're basically moving positions. And so we'll see what happens at the center position, and, and that that's going to probably be one of the keys on how this offensive line fits together. But – I'm confident that Donovan Real has probably got this under control right now. So, folks, as we posted uh, from a number of people, ex including Exploring with Ben, hit the like button, please. Uh, it's an easy thing to do just to hit the like button. YouTube likes that. That's not stroking uh, my ego or Greg's. It has more to do with YouTube. Uh, they like the uh, the like button. So they push the uh, video out into traffic if there's a high percentage of likes. Also down on the uh, ticker below, we've got a Discord that's gaining momentum so you can uh, talk Huskers all the time. So you don't have to wait until you get in a live chat right here uh, for the one hour each week. You can go to Patreon, search Mark Hunters TV, sign up right there. We get you the link and you can talk college football. Tim's in there and all sorts of good people are in there. We got about 55 or 60 exploring with Ben's there. Uh, on our discord all and right let me also um if everybody watching likes our stuff at at, at on three nebraska um you know we have a temporary youtube channel that that you should subscribe to uh on three nebraska video here on youtube so if everybody can subscribe to that you can see myself and, and steve and a sipple uh, recap uh, all the action from this past weekend and and the past camps and everything too. So um, every every video that we produce right now from on three Nebraska is on that YouTube channel on three Nebraska video on YouTube. We also have uh, Sam who is stating that uh, Greg, did you notice that it was at camp that? Jacques Yen did to win the kid's favorite coach award. <laughs> All he had to do was take off his shirt, Sam. <laughs> and it was over. <laughs> no, man. I, I know Jacques as well now. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever po posted that picture of us at Moonbot? Or, you know, with the Moonbot shirts? Uh, probably not. Um, no, <laughs> did I post it? Yeah, on here. You never did. You never did be able to do that, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, anyway, though, you know, jo Jack West is a, a very, very humble young man and uh, a very, very likable, big, scary looking teddy bear. <laughs> so, uh, no, it, just his personality is, is, is magnetic to kids. And especially, you know, young running backs that are looking up, you know, for role models. Um, no, he looks like a he looks like a Greek god when he's not wearing a shirt. So <laughs> I 
think he pretty much just won over the room right there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's uh, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a room full of guys that are jacked. Yeah, uh, he stands out. And he can run fast, too. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, part of the game, too. Ezra Miller is an offensive tackle in a conversation that we have every week about offensive line play, and it needs to get better. Uh, he was pretty highly ranked, a second-rated player in the state of Iowa in 2020. So he's uh, played his freshman year and sophomore year. He's a Richard sophomore now. Uh, so he redshirted one of those two years, but uh, James Allen would like to know about an update on Ezra Miller. You know, his name has been talked about lately here as, as a guy that's really been working hard, um, you know, throughout spring and now into summer conditioning and stuff. And, and I know for a fact that Don Venerilla likes him a lot. Um, so I wouldn't keep his name out as a, as a guy that can possibly, uh, you know, obviously be a, a second string guy and help out at several different positions and maybe work his way into the starting rotation if needed. So yeah, no, he, he's come a long way. Really. He, he really has. And, um, you know, he's a guy that Nebraska got, you know, he plucked him away from Iowa and, um, you know, they, they like him a lot. So, uh, yeah, his time's coming, definitely. And uh, you know, you know how it is in the trenches during a college football season is you know the offensive line takes some blows, and you know you've always, you always have to have the guys ready to step up and, and step into the lineup and perform at a high level. Husker D, thank you so much for the support, and Daniel, thank you for that as well. That uh, you are here for me and for all the content that we produce, we appreciate you that. And uh, you know that uh, thank you so much for that. Cheryl, thanks for being here. Appreciate you as well. Um, so some people are asking about, uh, so keep in mind, if you're here late, Omari and Miller, uh, we addressed him and some other folks. Um, so keep in mind that uh, if you're a little bit late, most likely we hit on those players. Um, Segathon is hearing, NHL 95, is hearing that uh, Chepa Purdy is pushing Casey Thompson. He is. He has been, okay. yeah. Yeah, obviously. Right. They're both talented quarterbacks um, in their own right. And <laughs> you know, from, from what you have seen or what anybody has seen with them both running the same offense for the limited time that you did see it in the spring game is that Chubby Purdy outperformed Casey Thompson. Um, and, and you got to keep in mind that Chubba Purdy didn't participate in the first part of spring practice either. Um, he was nursing an injury that he had come in here with um, from Florida State, basically. So um heck i it's going to be a really interesting battle to see here when fall camp opens up um because yeah it, you might maybe casey thompson isn't the the straightforward starting guy uh until we see and you know that's that's why mark whipple gets paid the big bucks you know that's his decision to make so um we're obviously going to see what happens here uh in fall camp so yeah, I, I like it. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the, the, the problem that, that you see with this is that the odd man out is, is Logan Smothers. Um, but, you know, God bless him. He's still a Husker. So um, he's still there and he's still making some good uh, NIL uh, profits, too, as I see. Uh, if, if you go to our, our on three Nebraska website that we actually do have, uh, we have a list of all the, uh, the NIL uh, revenue on, on players uh in the country so and it broke down by each team so it's kind of cool to see <laughs> so you see casey thompson would be number one on that list for nebraska he, he's in the top i think he's 188th in the country <laughs> so you see everybody in the country uh, yeah. you, you see each team and you see every player in the country yeah it's break broken down by uh yeah 
by how much each player is making. Yep. How do we know that? How do we have that information? Isn't That's that a, private? Of my pay, pay grade, Mark. <laughs> okay. I don't know if they actually tell you exactly how much they're making, but they give you a ranking on okay. what they're getting. That's more like, they, yeah, they're not going to, yeah, they, they can't disclose exactly what they're getting. But uh, Well, they can if they want to, but it's private. They don't have to. Right, right. So, right yeah. It's all, tax, it's, all tax, it's all taxed. It's all taxed anyway. I mean, it, well, sure. it's all, the IRS uh, gets their chunk of it. So, yeah. So I guess you guys are telling me with Chuppa Purdy pushing Casey Thompson that uh, I'm, I'm working right now on my Big Ten quarterback rankings. Oh, boy. So I've yet to release this video that that's going to tear that to shreds if uh, Chuppa <laughs> Purdy pulls a surprise. Well, uh, yeah, heck, it's it's June. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> but I'm just telling you, don't be surprised if there's a battle there before the season starts. I've seen them both in person. I mean, they're both impressive guys. I mean, really, in their own in their own way. I mean, hey, Chuba can run, man. I'm telling you, he's tough too. I'm not saying Casey can't run, but uh, I think Casey'd rather stay back in the pocket, pocket, and, and sling yeah. it. But um, Chuba ain't Chuba's not scared to just put his shoulders down and, and ram me over. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brooks is telling us Chubba is more dynamic threat theoretically than Casey, but Casey seems like yeah. he really understands the position at this level. And I think Chubba's sneaky athletic for just if you look at him, I think he, you know, he, he kind of surprises you with, with his running ability and his elusiveness when he's running, too. So, yeah, I, I like his, I really like his whole package. Not to sound gay there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're with you. We we let that slide, Greg. We let that go. <laughs> uh. All right, folks. Nebraska Live, we come your way every Tuesday. Done this 74 consecutive weeks. So we're consistent. We hope you'll be consistent. We appreciate everybody being here. And uh, smash the like button. Please help us out at least that way. Keep in mind that we've got Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App, as you see uh, typically on the bottom of the screen. Right now we got our Discord as well. We're pushing that on Patreon. So get on over to Patreon. Tim's on the Discord. Ben's on the Discord. And so jump on Discord. Uh, you do that by going to patreon.com, search Mark Riders TV. Then you've got a college football live chat that you can take in all the time, all the time, all the time. Yeah, I saw a question there that I think we just answered that. If we're going to on three, yes, we are on three now. <laughs> I'm not going to on three. We have gone to on three. <laughs> Maryland fan Michael Wheatley talking about the second best quarterback in the Big Ten is going to be Talia Tungavailoa. Well, maybe. Mm. Maybe, maybe. He's a pretty dynamic dude. I can yeah. tell you that. That's for sure. It's a pretty athletic family. <laughs> yeah, they're doing pretty well for themselves. They sure are. You got to love it. You got to love uh, all the talent that comes out of the state of Hawaii. I mean, I pull for every one of them that, uh, you know, gets a good shot at making it big. I just I have a special place in my in my heart for the islands. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Maybe the first time I went to Hawaii, I was okay. uh, 11 and uh, fell in love with it and kind of fell in love with scuba diving and everything. And okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. All right. Since we've got no comments or questions right this second, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to our. Um, this guy watching Arkansas and Auburn, right? We're going to go back to our, our weekly. Uh, assignment here, our series where we're going through 
recruiting classes. All right. We went through 22. Uh, did we go through 21? I'm not remembering now. I think we went through these guys. We're going to go back to 2020. We're going to get your take on how these guys have turned out so far. All right. You ready to roll? Sir. Okay. I'll give you a handful of guys. You can talk about whoever you want to. Uh, first four from the top of the list, uh, highest recruited player. You got offensive tackle Turner Corcoran, Xavier Betts at wide receiver, linebacker Keyshawn Green, and wide receiver Marcus Fleming. <laughs> uh, this is kind of like the last one we did. Um, only one of those are on the team. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, Tor uh, Corcoran is is the one guy that, that yeah. is still a Husker and um, a guy that was banged up last year. And um, it was kind of cool. He was out there on Saturday at the pipeline camp helping out. They actually had Teddy Prohaska and, and Turner. Uh, Donovan Rilla had those two guys uh, demonstrating uh, moves to every to all the uh, the campers. So uh, that was kind of cool, and you know, he, he was a guy that was a, a U.S. Army All American, and um, you know, highly highly ranked coming out of out of Kansas, and and uh, you know, it, it kind of has yet to really live up to his complete potential, but I think it's there, and. I think a position change moving him inside to guard is going to help him out quite a bit because if he's going to play in the NFL, it's at the guard position. It's not a tackle. Um, so, yeah, I think that this year might be a, a breakout type year for Turner Corcoran and and uh, and and be that that type of a, a highly ranked guy and, and you know and perform to that type of a level. Now, obviously, we know Xavier Betts uh, not with the team anymore. Uh, basically, quit here in the spring. Um, Keyshawn Green really never even had a chance to stay here. He he left right away. <laughs> uh, he was another U.S. Army All American. That I I mean I was down in San Antonio and I covered both both Turner Corcoran and, and Keyshawn Green. Um, so yeah, and I'm not sure what happened with Marcus Lemon. <laughs> Next four, safety Henry Gray, wide receiver Omar Manning, Nadab Joseph, cornerback, and Jaden Francois, safety. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Omar Manning is a starting wide receiver, so uh, he's the one guy that – and another guy that really hasn't produced up to his potential either when, when he comes into the class. Um. We haven't got a chance to see any of the other guys play, so I can't really talk about it. But yeah, Omar Manning, I think I think he's poised to have a, have a really good senior year this year, um, especially with the additions <laughs> that they've made. Um, so yeah, I, I think that it's things are going to get opened up for Omar Manning this year, especially after being through here uh, two years already and uh, kind of knowing how things how the way things work and. And I think Mickey Joseph is the key behind all this because if I know what special magic Mickey Joseph has with wide receivers, I think that you see a big time spark lit into Omar Manning this season and live up to the hype that, uh, that he had coming out of high school and then coming out of the Juco ranks. All these guys, Gray, Manning, Joseph, and Francois, are all four stars. They've all been in the system for two years going on three years, so you would think that this is a, a year for them to get going. You also have to think, too, they all have a, they all had a free year, too, so they're basically not even, you know, they're, they're still classified a year younger <laughs> in eligibility than, than, you know, years in the program, too. All right, our next group is quarterback Logan Smothers, running back Savion Morrison, wide receiver Alante Brown, and strong side defense fan Blaze Gunnerson. Uh, a lot of guys there I love a lot. Obviously, Savion Morrison uh, moved on elsewhere. But, 
yeah. Um, <laughs> Blaze Gunnerson, a guy I went and watched play when he was in high school in Iowa, and and you know he's a he's a pass rushing specialist and a big scary one, and he's going to get some chances this year. I love I love his chances of uh, you know stepping up and making his making his name here this year in the program. Uh, you know, redshirted and, and then had a few injury problems, but uh, he's healthy now. And guy, he he looks like a million bucks. I'll tell you right now. Um, Logan Smothers, uh, yeah, another guy. I went down. You know, I went to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and covered him when he was a senior. Had a great time down there. Love his family. Uh, Muscle Shoals High School there Bunch of Husker fans there <laughs> Bunch of Husker fan parents They, they just It's crazy uh, You know Logan's had His ups and downs And uh, you know They brought in two guys In front of him this year uh, Kind of giving you It's either uh, Sending you a message Or, or step it up So um, Yeah You know He Obviously, he's still here on the team, so that that says something. And and uh, he's not he's definitely not a guy that's ever ever going to give up. Um, he's he's one of the most competitive guys you'll ever see, and he's a he's a hell of an athlete. I'll tell you that. And he can run like the wind. Um, so you know the the jury's still out there. Uh, what was the sorry the the fourth one? Fourth one was uh, Blaze Gunnerson. No, no, no. We talked about Blaze. Oh, uh, Lante Brown. Oh, Lante Brown. Lante Brown. Lante Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? I'm hearing really good things this year, too. I, Mickey Joseph loves him, and I guess he's stepped up quite a bit. Um, so I'm looking for him to get a lot of playing time this year. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what it looks like here uh, when we get a chance to look at these guys in the fall. But, uh, yeah, they're very, very high on him, and, and I know his teammates are as well. I, he's put in a ton of work, I can tell you that. All right. Next group from the 2020 class would be uh, defensive tackle Nash Hutmacher. We've got Ash, uh, yeah. Maga Clements, the linebacker, right. William Nixon at wide receiver, and Marvin Scott at running back. Well, really the only uh, out of that group, Nash Hutmacher is going to be a dude. Um, now, with the new additions from the transfer portal on defensive line, I think the pressure comes off of Nash a little bit. But they're planning to use this guy a ton. I mean, he is the biggest, strongest, old, nasty dude that you would ever lay eyes on. I mean, he could go bear hunting with a switch, you know, and, and win. Um, this guy, he can bench, he can bench a car. I mean, yeah, he's scary or he can squat a car. I'm sorry. But, um, no, there's probably the most praise out of any young defensive lineman that has come out of this, this spring and, and summer It's Nash hot marker. And, um, no, he, he's, he, he's built the, Play foot. I mean, he, he's a wrestler, but he's built to play football and and just stuff the middle and stuff the run. And uh, gosh, I, I I've got such high hopes for Nash Hutmarker. Like I said, you know, he's a he's a good old boy that you know he's happiest when he's hunting or fishing, you know, or lifting weights. That that's that's the three biggest things he loves to do. <laughs> well, as Brooks Bradshaw is telling us, crash and smash and gnash and gnash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I seriously, I would never, ever want to do anything physical against Nash Hutmacher ever. I mean, he crushed <laughs> me like a bug. <laughs> All right. Next four. And obviously, this is going to get a little less um, impactful as we go. Alex Kahn, offensive tackle, Jamari Butler, weak side defensive end, Marquise Black, D tackle, and Nico Cooper as a, a weak side defensive end. Yeah, jeez. I think Alex Kahn's still on the team. I'm not sure. 
That's about it. Okay. Uh, well, they might be, but not in the picture. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, sorry I don't have much on that group. <laughs> uh, no, that's all right. That's why we're doing this. Yep. yep. We don't have anything. We keep going. So we got uh, Ronald Delancey at corner. We got Valdarius Payne at strong side defensive end. We got Jordan Riley, who's, of course, gone at D end. Isaac Gifford, safety. Well, at least you got Isaac still there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, Isaac right now is basically the forerunner to replace Jojo Doman um, at that nickel spot. Um, you know, he had a really good spring, and, you know, his, his brother Luke plays in the NFL, and, you yeah. know, both, both Lincoln Southeast uh, graduates, proud Lincoln Southeast graduates that, you know, there's a lot of those guys that ended up at Nebraska, and, um, Isaac's come a long way. I mean, he's another guy, obviously, that I've covered ever since he was a lad. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's funny to see these guys now that they have full beards and stuff and look all grizzly and, and big and rough and tough. And I remember them when they were in, in 10th grade and stuff, and they didn't look anything like that. Um, but uh, no, I, Isaac's a, he's always been a, a really good football player. Um, you know, and, uh, heck, like I said, he's got a lot of the same skills that Jojo Doman had or has. And, you know, he's really – he's got a great opportunity here to, you know, become a full-time, uh, you know, starter on the black shirts defense. But I, I definitely think that he'll earn himself a black shirt, black shirt this season. And I doubt if we've got anything with the last two, Tame and Lineham, corner, and Daniel Cerny, punter. That's that. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> Back to 2020, 2020 class. These guys are coming into their third year. Probably what about half of them still on the team? Yeah. Something like that. All right. Brooks is saying, you ever think of doing team specific call in shows? I'd like to call in show with Greg. If you guys want to support it, cost money to do, do a, our call-in shows. So we do the call-in shows uh, on the main channel. But uh, so if you guys want to get uh, up for ship or throw these super chats in here at a regular rate, uh, then we can we can look into that. That'd be fun. We'll take some calls. Absolutely, I'd be happy to do it. All right. What else am I going to do? <laughs> so here's what uh, everybody else should do is uh, the video is going to post here in just a minute. So we are wrapping up right now, but uh, the video is going to post and you can catch what you missed. And then the next thing you do is you make sure you're here on time at six central seven Eastern next Tuesday for our next, uh, next go at it. Greg, you got anything else for us? Oh, boy. I don't think so. <laughs> for once, no. <laughs> All right. Somebody was asking about the Wednesday lineup. This is it. Michigan at 5, Florida State at 6, Miami at 7, Eastern. So there join you. us then. Three in a row. All right, Greg, we appreciate it. We don't have a show without you. So thank you for that. Thumbs up. See everybody back here next week. Uh, Tuesday at 6, everyone. 6 Central. See you next Tuesday.